Hey there boys and girls of YouTube world. Today the Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1966 Buick Electra deuce and a quarter running again. That's right, 1966 Buick Electra 225 in white, the best color there is on a car. Picked her up, I don't know, a month, month and a half ago from the old Bookface Marketplace from a guy that I've done some dealing with before, the old Noodler. He's an all right guy. We're just finally getting to it. So I literally shoved it on the trailer that day. Then it sat on the trailer for a month, needed my trailer, unloaded it, sat here ever since. I haven't looked at it. Let's check it out. The reason that I picked this up, it's a 66, so I believe it's the last year of the 401 nailhead. Maybe they made it in 67, but I think it's the one year only of the switch pitch turbo 400. Otherwise they had like some two speed Dynaflow, no good. But it's got the Buick road wheels on it, rally if you will. It's got the 45 fin aluminum brake drums which look really sweet on hot rods they also made some 90 fins which is what i thought the noodler told me had this this thing had but 45s are way more gooder got a pretty good whiskey dent up here it's got some pretty nice patina looks like there was some body work took place right in there a little tap dancing by two ton tina on the roof oh, look at that couch of a back seat it's good duff Come check it out. No, not interested? Check it out. It's good. What do you think? Tilt wheel, air conditioning, a giant huge donut. Is that a is that like a record? A little 45 record? I don't know. It's it's got a smell. What did just ran? Oh, was it this that moved? I don't know. It's got the Buick floor mats. Somebody enjoyed a case of Third Street Brew House Oktoberfest. Oh. Engineer approved accessories for 1966. Car clean. Automatic trunk release. Fire extinguishers. Tilt wheel. Whoa. Oh man, they had a Wildcat V6 in 66. This has got the big dog though. I think it's got the 445. So it's not 445 cubic inches. It's 445 feet pounds of torque. 280 horsepowers. Nine to one compression ratio. Anyways. Locking gas cap, door guards, gas tank door guards. Go check out uh, Iowa Classic Car Ryan. He probably knows stuff about this. Hazards. Ooh, cornering lamps. Radio. Oh, what is a tone reverberator? What the heck is that? I don't know. It's fun to say though. The reverberator. Probably get kicked out of class for saying that. Vanity mirror. Is that in here? Nope. I wish the visors were that good in 92. Man, that headliner ain't bad. That's probably where they jumped on the roof too. Anywho, oh, it ain't a hard top. It's got the post, it's got the posty post there. Yep, she's a post car. Sure looks like a hard top though. It's got fender skirts that these cars absolutely must have because they have like a stamping seam and they look hideous without them. Quarters, they're there. A couple little scuffs back here, nothing too bad. I don't know why it's got a hitch. Because the only thing this thing is pulling is tail. Like I said, she's the deuce and a quarter version. I think they made the La Sabres and probably a couple other. The Skylarks, that was like the mid-size, like your Chevelles. This was your big dog, like an Impala. A-body, what they were? Who knows? Yeah, you can see that seam there or the skirt. You gotta have it, otherwise they look terrible. It's got some lichens on the side, like my science teacher tells me about. He keeps wanting me to tell you guys about how the, I don't know, it does like some photosynthesis things and, and the, that eats the something else which provides the nutrients for, uh, some, I don't know, lichens. They're important. So glad I learned about them. Thanks Silver Fox, best teacher ever. We should pressure wash those off. We could get a whole video out of that if we were from Pottawatomie County, Oklahoma. Uh, front fender, dog leg, she gone. The portholes were kind of gone by 66, but they still had these. Four of them instead of three. I think there was a year of Buicks where like the cop cars or the, the real fast ones had four portholes. 
Otherwise, most Buicks had three. Was it like a, a 52, three, four, something like that? There's a four porthole Buick that there's something special about it. These do have a pretty cool front end on them, I won't lie. Um, I just bought this car for a will it run because it was American made V8 rear wheel drive and it was complete and it was close enough to home because, you know, inflation isn't real, so fuel is only $4.10 a gallon for gasoline. Diesel, which is what I took to go get this, is now like. 520 a gallon. You don't need to tell me how much it is where you're at because I know everybody's got it worse than us. He says it's it spun over when he got it, but it's now locked up. I didn't even open the hood. I just said, load it up. So pretty much as close as you get to buying it sight unseen. I had like four pictures on the book face. Let's get it inside because as you can see, it's, it's getting dark out. You can see the sun setting over there on the other side of the 66. And the cab over somebody needs to own that thing before i get tempted to put a diesel in it or something so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the ball off the hitch and we're gonna put a half inch bolt in there and we're gonna take the skid steer put that bolt to the hole in the forks duff's gonna steer we're gonna go find some deer poop to roll in which is probably what he's doing now we're gonna put it inside because it's windy and it's getting dark because that's what happens when you gotta have a regular job and you don't get to do this all day kind of jealous of that uh well, both, well Wes kind of has a real job but he just gets paid to film doing it but that pudding character he just i don't know what he does what does he do though you find anything out there okay also thanks to whoever set the uh the pet wipes apparently they make like hand wipes sanitizing wipes for your for your animal we haven't tried them all yet but that's a pretty brilliant idea. It's way better than treats because we got we got treats for days. They're like fudge stripe cookies around here. Okay, let's take a hitch off. What size are you? That's why you take the whole set with you. Well, this is the kind that's got the bolt going inside of it. And it's gonna spin, you know what it is, because I didn't bring a switch to open. Got it! Nice. I know you're not supposed to pick up the car by these hitches, but we do a lot of things you're not supposed to do. Is this supposed to pull this camp with this? No license plate, so we don't know what year it was run last. We're just gonna say 88. Sounds like a good year. Hey, are you gonna come steer or what? Never mind, I guess I'll just do it by myself. All right, appreciate it. You're a good dog. You ran off on the job again. All right, I guess I'll do everything by myself. So I gotta get a look at the hind end of this thing, push it in here. That's a pretty sweet, like Star Wars-esque taillight thing. You know, kind of, isn't it the, the guy who's got the, the, the red eye thing? I don't know. Star Trek, yeah, that one. The best magicians will never let you see what's up their sleeve, counselor. I think they had like a, the Star Wars air cleaner on like the Buick GS and 68.9, something like that. But also, uh, staring at them, this voluptuous beauty. There's, there could be several human bodies in the trunk. So let's, since we know it's got keys, let's check. Also, there's some trim that fell off. It's gonna get mashed by the trunk here. We'll just throw that in the back seat. Oh, the door even opens. Yeah, I'll, you check it out, go for it. Ooh, it's even got pink. Reddish key. Duff, he does, he's, he's sticks to hoods, he doesn't know how to open trunks. Let's put some lubrication in there. Where are we gonna find that? Also, it looks like all the wheels are turning, so that's a plus. We got some PB Blaster penetrating catalyst. It's the number one selling penetrant, according to them. It's got the straw, and the straw is way too big to fit in the key. And the can is, is there a lock? Oh, it's an adjustable. Well, it's, it's dead. Next. We got some Croil with the scooter stick. You're gonna stand there owning a firework stand and tell me you don't have no whistling bungholes, tonky lighters, husker do's, husker don'ts, cherry bombs, nips of dazers, with or without the scooter stick. You want the scooter stick to go in the hole. Okay. Let's 
still no go. No. That's key, loop. I'm sliding in and out real fast. That's what she said. <laughs> Lots of loop. So it's gushing out. Oh. The shaft is fully going in now. Now we just gotta get it to turn. I think we're gonna get the drill. That seems like more fun. Hey Duff, we got a hood to open. You are a gentleman and a scholar, thank you sir. You ready? Here we go. Oh, the hood pops on the inside, he said. Well, he got her, he jumped inside thinking the hood pop was inside, but then he found it, sniffed it out with his nose. It's down there. Look at all the room between the grill and the rad meter. Oh, AC condenser actually, there's room for a Small party to take place up there. Any T3 headlights? One, two. Oh, two out of four. That's almost 50%, not bad. Like I said, she's a 445. Missing a wing nut. Look at all this ginormousism of an air cleaner. And then this little itty bitty tiny baby air filter. He just a little guy. He just a little guy. So let's get that out of the way. It's a Carter AFB style something WCF4B something or other. Power steering, power brakes, cruise control, spark plug delete option, no flexi hose, still got the hourglass red meter clamps. I don't know what was clamped up here, but it's missing. Looks like a coil bracket. Well, there's a coil back there, so that's good. So if we do get it turned, oh, son of a biscuit spoke too soon. There's the flexi hose on the lower. Two red battery cables. One of them's got Wes's favorite end. Looks like the overflow slash washer fluid tank is no bueno. Is that a shotgun shell that was in there? Sure enough. 12 gauge five shot. Must have like hunting pheasants. Like I said, uh, Buick nail head. This is what I call the second generation and last generation, the early ones were like 364s, something like that. I mean, a couple, maybe a 322 and a 364. I'm not a Buick expert. And then these were 401s, and the big dog was the 425. You seen those? They probably came in some of these cars, and then you saw them in the, not the Tornados. What was those cars? Rivieras, Rivieras, Duff says. And you could get, I think they all came with four barrels, these, what I call second gens, and then you could get them with dual quads as well. Real rippers. Single horn, oh. We got carburetor cleaner and a fire extinguisher holder. And a random jug. Look at that fancy radiator neck so that it didn't, you know, have to have the bend in the hose. Dual belts on the alternator and air conditioning. It's frigid air, so you know it's good. It fits the Wildcat, the Electra, and the Riviera. And Skylark GS, oh my gosh. All of the models. That says something about don't put your fingers in a fan. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. We have a little winter front action going on here. Oh yeah, keep the bugs out of the condenser. We got coolant or any type of liquid. Oh yeah, it's green even. Don't worry, Duff doesn't drink it even when we do spill it. Duff says the tires are low, the fronts especially. Just on the bottom though, right? Oh, I dig the little white stripe out. What kind are those? Steel radials, that's what kind. They're JR70-15s. This one's even more on the lowish side. Go check out that sleeper dude guy. I think he's in, I don't know, the south somewhere. And he calls them casings. Never heard anybody call them casings except for him. Or Casey Jones. 
I don't know if he's related to Davy Jones, who's got that locker. But they all match. This guy has a high roller. Thin white lines, they're good. White letters, not so good. I think these are a five on five bolt pattern as well. So you can't bolt these on your Chevelle or your Impala, unless it's like a 71 to 76 Impala, because most of the Chevy cars are four and three quarter. And then these big Buicks, Olds, Pontiac, Cadillacs, five on five, and then 71 to, I don't know, forever Chevy pickups. 71 to 98 two wheel drives. Okay, enough rambling. Check the dipstick, Jimmy. <laughs> Where is a dipstick, Jimmy? Have you had a Buick? You just never had to check it or what? Oh, found it. Uh, well, it's full up to here and it looks really sludgy down to here. And I'm not gonna run my finger through it, but I'm guessing the full line is right in here. Maybe here? Stay tuned. We'll return after these messages. Okay, here we go. Where's your guess? I'm guessing right there. Cap, four quarts, operating rate. That's pretty close right there. So it's it's only about two capacities over full. Add one quart, operating range, capacity four quarts. These things only held four quarts of oil. Oh boy. So, how'd the water get in there? Well, the carburetor seized. Oh. So maybe that's how it got in there? I guess the first thing we're gonna do is pull the drain plug because it's got a lot of water in it. I haven't dealt with a stuck engine for a while. I don't know if you can see it, but this is a lot of excitement on my face. <sighs> well, that's neat. It goes right into the block. There's no dipstick tube. It's just machine into the block. Buick, cutting edge technology. Oh, and the fuel hose is hooked up. That's not how the water got in there. Duff, check out the carpet. Does it look like it's been sitting in a lot of water? Is, it, is there like a water line inside? There's, there's an animal underneath, is that what you're telling me? Did a raccoon ride with us up here? I'll get it up in the air and you fend it off. Okay, good talk. We got the big dog drain pan because it's got a big dog drain plug. It's like seven eighths, 15 sixteenths. And uh, it's, it's probably over full with, with water. So five quarts ain't gonna cut it. There's a nice close-up shot of the 45 fin aluminum brake drums. Super cool. If nothing else, I guess we get that in a switch pitch turbo 400 out of the deal. Or switch pitch 400? I don't know. Clutch fan, so we can't just turn on that to get the engine loose. Bummer. Old t-shirts, best shop rags ever. Underwear, close second. Followed by socks and then towels. You know what don't work well? Jeans, just throw those things away. All right. Oh, we should have two pans. We could separate the water from the oil. That's thinking. Hold on. We're gonna save the environment, Greta. How dare you? Oh, we're dripping water already. Since water is heavier than oil, the water will come out first, assuming that it's water. Good old Flint, Michigan water. Well, maybe it's gasoline. Doesn't smell like gas. Okay, uh, oil anytime now. And uh, we should have had a bigger pan for water. Oh my. Well, that pan's full. Are we getting oil? Woohoo! There. We gotta keep them separated. That was a lot of water. Oil does not look very good either. I could probably put that back in. Well, we got a little bit of residual in here. Let's see if it's gas that was in the engine. Not that it really matters. I'm about 98 and a quarter percent sure that it's water, but I'm gonna step back just in case. Yep, that most definitely was water. And I'm guessing it somehow got in through the carburetor. Seems how that's stuck too. But whatevs, let's go underneath. And heck with it. Let's throw a battery in it and see if we can't get her to crank over. See what happens. Who's going to be our battery sponsor this week? Looks like we got Florida Man this week. Still holding strong. This one's positive. Facing the right way. Oops, squeeze in there. Well, that's a little sloppy. 
Oh, we got some some sparkage. We better put a locking pliers on there to really get all the clamping force. Nails work good. You ever, you ever seen somebody do that? They just pound a nail from the top of their battery cable clamp to get her good and tight. Oh, that's why it's arcing. Look at this on here. I'll show you guys what we got going on up here. I'm sure some of you experts can already guess what I was looking at up here that's drawing electricity. Say it out loud with me. The headlights. But how many are lit up? But you can't guess. If you guessed all four headlights were lit up, go crack yourself a sandwich. You win a beer. <laughs> Those must be the high beams. So, push that in. Where's the keys? Oh, in the trunk. This miraculously hasn't opened itself yet either. Hopefully this works for the ignition. Was, it, was there supposed to be like some advertising in the center of this little record here? Who's it made by? Action Line USA. Hmm. Oh, the light under the dash even works. Dome light? Oh, bulb is out of that one. And out of that one. There ain't one in the middle. This thing kind of actually smells decent in here, surprisingly. I like how it's labeled lighter and ashtray. Like, duh. How many mices have been in there? None. Except for the insert for the glove box. Oh. What's that? Is that a trunk pop? Why isn't it working? It's probably vacuum operated. Yep. Oh, if we could get the engine running, the trunk pop might work. Power antennae? What's this accessory thing right here? What's that for, huh? It's got a Sonomatic Radmio. Okay. What do you guys think? Oh, the lights come on in the radio. Gen light comes on. Look at how that thing fluctuates. Here goes nothing. I think she's sticky. Let's go underneath and see if we can't put a bar on it. Why does that not shut off? I hooked up to the dope light. Where's the switch? Heck yeah. I just gotta close the door. That switch fixed it. Look at that little plastic insert so that the dirt stays up in the fender. That's pretty cool. Windows? Oh, I gotta turn the key back on. Now windows. Ooh. It's not happy about it, but it's trying. And that's the only one. Freaking power seat even. Remote mirror. This thing's good. Other than the part that it's locked up. Okay, I'm gonna go round up some tools and see what we can't figure for prying underneath there. I can't remember if this transmission... What's you? I like to get on the ring gear, usually, as opposed to the crankshaft. But worst case scenario, we'll just have to get some leverage on the crankshaft. So here's an interesting fact about the Buicks. If you're gonna put them in an old hot rod, the starter's over here on the driver's side, so it gets in the way of your steering. Uh, small blocks and pretty much everything else that I'm aware of has them on the passenger side, like your Y blocks, the 240, 300 Fords, the 289 Fords, small block Chevy, big block. It's all over there. Nail heads are the only ones I'm aware of. I'm sure there's other ones. So if you're gonna swap one of these into an early hot rod, be aware of that. It gets a little tight with the steering. Uh, for one of these in a uh, Model T that we're putting together for my cousin, we've had to put cowl steering just because it was really tight in that T. Good news is, it's got an inspection cover, so we can get that off and hopefully get at the teeth for the flex plate. And as you can see, it's got the silly Turbo 400 oil pan. It's got this kind of goofy layout. Uh, Turbo 350 is pretty much square with a corner cut off. This one looks like just a puddle on the ground. I don't know, maybe it looks like one of the Great Lakes. Who knows, it's kind of squiggly, it goes all over the place. That's how you tell if it's a 400. What's a, what's a power glider? Are they perfectly square? Anyway, we're gonna pull this inspection cover off, see if we can't get a bar on that and get this thing cranking over. What are we gonna see behind door number three? Oh, water. Of course. Man, maybe this thing's that in some water. How did it get in through the drain plug or what? Okay, let's go get our prying device. See if we can't get her bumped over. Let's get El Jefe hooked up onto the teeth here. Oh, what am I gonna pry it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this the other way. I'm gonna go put my foot on it. That's always good for blowing out your Achilles tendon or whatever. She's gonna just turn right over, right? Right. Oh yeah! Freaking nice. 
Okay, on that note, we know it's got water in there. Went in the carburetor, had to go through the pistons, presumably. So we're gonna pull the spark plugs out so we're not hydro locking this thing if there should be some water in the cylinders. That way we can look and see which ones are sticking and might pull the valve covers off too. I don't know, I think these got a, the rocker assembly where it's all on a rocker shaft. We'll make sure those don't get seized and bend a bunch of push rods like we like to do on Y blocks and FEs and Chryslers, everything that's got those rocker shafts. Everything got small block Chevys apparently. Even 235s have those. Okay, time to pull some spark plugs out. So excited it turns over though. Yes. Oh, spark plugs are super easy to get it on this side. Not so much with all the AC on the other side. You always want to use a flare wrench on these tube lines and you always want to use a second wrench so that when you spin it, it doesn't stay stuck to the fitting that it's threaded into. You twist and kink your steel line. I'm sure that's what somebody did up here on this carburetor. Always what happens. And that's our vacuum port for our rig booster. That's our plug wire holder for our Bluetooth wires. How bad is she going to look under here? We should blow that off first. Try to keep some of this out of the valve train. Oh, don't tell me we're gonna have to get that kick down out of there. But I tell you what, there it is. It looks really good in there. It looks very, very good. A little bit of dirt that we got in there from taking that off. A couple of cobwebs. So like I said, uh, small block Chevy has a single stud for every rocker arm where this thing just has a whole rocker shaft assembly. It's got a shaft that they go through and these things like to rust onto these shafts. Always wanna take a look at them if the engine that you're trying to get unstuck or fired up has these, otherwise you'll bend push rods. Ah, oh, shoot, minute. Cause these rocker arms are stuck, it bent the push rods. Oh. Wah, wah, wah. Look at the angle on these push rods. So your push rods are on this side and your valves are on this side. And that's why I guess they call them a nail head because they got these little tiny vertical valves. Maybe, I don't know. Let's see if I can show you a little bit better. So here's all your valves, they're perfectly vertical. Usually they're coming in on this side and you got your push rods coming off your camshaft right here. Instead they're coming over from here and they got this really extreme angle. They're pert near flat coming off that camshaft. So. Some really crazy geometry. And yeah, you can see how the rocker shaft, it connects up here and down here. So it's got this giant contour that it bends over. They're uh, a different beast, a very strange animal. Somebody's been in here, they got way too long of a bolt in the valley pan and they got a bunch of nuts stacked up so that they can use said bolt. Interesting. And the critters have been storing Walnuts or something on there. Peanuts, maybe? Some type of nuts. Good thing I don't have a nut allergy. I don't even think we're gonna pull that other side off because this one looks so good. We're gonna pull some spark plugs out because these wires are toast anyway, so we can rip them off. And then we'll have to find out where number one is at. Eight plug wires, and only one of them looks like it's even remotely there. So let's take this one plug wire that's kind of there, and we can use that as a base for where our timing needs to go. There. As long as that don't break. The side's gonna be a little more difficult. Freaking AC. Oh, come off there. So we pulled all the spark plugs out. This side's got a couple that are a hint of rust on them. Not even really rusty at all. So maybe that water came up through the oil pan, through the drain plug. I don't know how it got in there. But cylinders don't look all rusty. So let's crank it over and see if anything comes out. What are the odds of just hooking the battery cable up and bumping the key over that she goes. For the shot, right? Should probably take that bar off first so that thing can see that. Wing! Through the wall. Through the window, through the wall. 
Just kidding, I'm too lazy to crawl underneath there. I kind of want to see what happens. Oh, if you put the battery cable on upside down, it clamps way better. All right, I'm gonna go hit the key. You guys watch for debris. I'll put you on the other side where it seems like the water may have entered a cylinder. Well, as you can tell, no such luck there. Just a couple of clickety clacks, no talk backs. So we're gonna go underneath and give the bar the old one, two with the twisted X's. Nothing's easy. Oh, I hear some squeaking. I'm gonna put some lube down the cylinders because it can't hurt, right? Okay, maybe the squeaky squeak will go away now. Listen to that. It's all way better. You hear that? Exactly. Silence. And the rain beating on the tin roof. A little stuck valve I just heard go clunk. Better bite here. More throw. Uh oh. Why is it sticky there? Yep, that's definitely a valve snap and shot. Okay, now let's see if the starter will do it. You hang out here and watch that. I'll go up top, do the hard part. Bench tested our starter, seems like it's working. It doesn't have a battery cable that goes from the positive all the way down to the starter. It's got this junction block here. So we're gonna put a new battery cable on there. This one doesn't look terrible, but we'll see what happens. Of course, it's got this sheathing that the uh, solenoid wires run through. So we might have to trim that off. This is still cloth braided wire in 66. The good stuff. Okay, so I clean this cable up because it doesn't look that bad. And we're actually using that cable. I know that doesn't mean that the cable's any good or the starter's any good, but I just, I don't have a cable with this sweet 90 degree end and it's really tight down there with the manifold and the steering and everything else. So I'll just use this factory cloth wrapped son of a biscuit hopefully it uh, works for what we need maybe it was just that connection that's bad or this connection on this end we'll clean those both up took the old flapper disc buffed her up good nice and shiny now let's see if it works okay we got our battery cable connections cleaned up let's hit the key see what happens you guys just listen for noises and clunks in the starter and watch for valves moving and Oil shooting out of the plug holes, water, whatever else. I'll go hit the key. Well, son of a biscuit, she turns over and don't sound too bad other than you can hear that one sticky valve. It takes a little bit to return. It sounds like it's on the other side, the hard valve cover removed, so. I guess let's just forget about it. Get some spark and then uh, go from there. Let me get that carburetor cleaned up. Maybe it'll just loosen itself up. Also, don't forget to remind me to put oil in it before we try firing it up. Turning it over a handful of times like this is, it's gonna be fine. Pull the cap off. I can almost guarantee that we don't have spark, but we could probably put a coil wire on it. We gotta go find some plug wires anyway. So we'll put a coil wire on it, crank it over and see, but I'm sure those points are not in good shape. OK, 
Okay, I got a jumper wire here going to our positive side of the coil to our positive battery post. Got ourselves a nice little coil wire. Easy way to tell which wire in the uh, kit is the coil wire is because it's significantly shorter than the rest. And it's got that big fat boot on the other end because I do love me a big fat booty. Anyway, we're going to try to rub it up against, get it real close to this connection here for the vacuum booster and not electrocute ourselves. Let's see if we get any spark. Okay, here we go. After sitting for 30 years, any bets? Yeah, I bet we're not gonna have any spark either. Nothing. Okay, I guess we're gonna be cleaning up some points as usual. They are opening and closing, so that's good. Should we close there? No, okay. yeah. We're gonna slip the screwdriver in, open the points up. Here a little Filarooski. Get the old patented Morsky flick. Give her a few times just for good luck. And now what do we got? It's not super consistent, but we got spark. He is the flick. You kids know that though by now. Okay, I'm gonna try to get the carb loose now and try not to remember to put oil in it. I mean, try to remember to put oil in it. Tomato, tomato. So, I don't know if we just give her the old brute force. Let's spray some. Oh, look at all that corrosion and rust and such in there. Yuck. We're gonna spray some lube on it first. Hopefully that helps. Cool. Cool beans. Cool beans. We got a carburetor that's loose. I don't think the four barrel part, the choke is working, but I can't get the rear butterflies to open, so secondaries, we ain't worried about that, not yet. We'll get it right, then we'll need all the horsepowers later. So let's stick some spark plugs back in it and throw some wires on it, see what happens. Well, I presume that the Buicks number their cylinders the same way as Chevrolet's do. And this was the only plug wire on the entire engine, which is number eight. So now if we can figure out the firing order, we know it rotates clockwise because I was watching it when I was spinning it over. And you know, that's the way they should turn. So, Let's find out the firing order of this hot rod. Hopefully it's, well it is right there. It's not 1843, 65, 72. It is 12784563. 12784563. Fooled me. Okay. So, that's seven. That's one. One, two. Uh -huh. I got some really long plug wires for a block Chevy with ram horn manifolds, so this is gonna be ugly. I know I could cut them to length, but we don't even know if it runs. Well, we got some mystery Haviland. It's 1030 though, because I crossed the 530 out and that's, that's what's in it. Don't ask where it came from. And since we don't have a valve cover, we're going to very carefully dump this in and hope it runs down the engine inside. Yeah, we're going to have to put the valve cover back on. Son of a biscuit. Maybe if we dump it in at the back. Why is everything got to be so difficult? Yeah, that's not going well either. Hmm. We're not going to dump it down the dipstick. 
Looks like we'll have to put that valve cover back on. Well, that's why the valve cover gaskets are kind of pushed out and leaking because they didn't line these little cork tabs up with the uh, valve cover apparently. No, well, that's gotta go the other way. Maybe they did do it right. Let's see. I'm not in the clear just yet. What is your problem? Cheese and rice. Got it. Just gotta beat it like it owes you money. Trying to get the valve cover gasket pushed up in there. The other side is all puked out too. I don't know. Somebody did a poor job of it, or these things were notorious for valve cover gasket leaks but I foresee some issues. Kind of like issues if I don't hook up this vacuum line. All this mess around just to put oil in. Now, let's see how much of a mess we can make. I was admiring the dipstick earlier. I noticed it said four quarts on it. And that's about what we put in. Which I thought five was kind of the gold standard. It says add one quart, operating range and capacity, four quarts. Well, that actually says cap, but yeah, I think that's probably short for capacity. Looks like we gotta add two quarts according to this. That's a big spill. One of the worst oil spills in U.S. history. All over our new plug wires. Son of a biscuit. Yeah, probably most definitely I should have used the funnel. Oh well. Someday we'll learn. Well, pal, what do you think? You can hit the key. All right, I guess. Let's see what happens. I was just picking up my mess. Would you look at that? I got a bonus plug wire in that kit. I probably bought dozens and dozens of plug wire kits. Never got a bonus. Thanks a lot, Napa Darren. All right, let's tickle this thing with some hot sauce and see if it lights off. Let's hook up the coil wire. I fill up the vent a little bit just in case she does pop off or run on her own for a bit. I never told you how much I hate these squeeze style bottles. Because I do. Only because I don't know how to use them, I think. All right, I'm getting impatient. Let's light her off. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. <laughs> oh boy. We're gonna need some more battery power. I wonder if it's that cable. You know what? Let's pop a couple new cables on it. This is a big engine. It's kind of sticky anyway. Let's just try it. Hey Duff, come check out these sweet new battery cables. They're even the right colors. So we're gonna have to snug that one up. We'll snug that up and then we'll see if she cranks over any better. Okay, snugged up. Starter switch is hooked up. This good old loser switch. He's been around. All right, here we go. Ooh, not any better. I suppose it's that starter. Or it's the cable down going to the starter. Son of a biscuit. What if we hook up another battery? Bad idea? You look tired. Yeah, I'm tired of this thing too. Okay. I guess let's hook up some more voltages. Amperages, yeah, we probably need more amps. Not even the cold cranking amps, just the standard temperature amps would be would be ample at this point. Well, look at this conglomeration. We got Florida Man hooked up to the solar battery charger. It's the brand, no, it's not solar powered. Hooked up to the other Florida Man over here. Now, watch this thing wing over. Sweet, we got all the amperages. So now, just gotta hook this up somewhere in here in this mess. Where's a good connection? Right down there. Now let's see if she pops off. What do you think, Duff? Is it gonna go? 
Yeah, you don't have much faith in the Buick, huh? All right, coils hooked up. Let's get some more hot sauce. Little's good. Lots better. Gotta fill up that float bowl a little bit, so if it does pop off, she'll stay running. All right. <laughs> Well, you know why? Because the coil wire never got plugged into the distributor. Let's see if we get a spark. We got spark. Now she's gonna go. Always hook up your coil. Third time's the charm. Now we got the locking pliers holding the choke open because we should have plenty of fuel. Double check your spark. Lots of spark. What is your problem? Hmm. It's definitely not turning over as fast as I want it to, but. I think it's just sticky. I don't think it's because it's got a lot of compression. And we struggle with compression around here. Let's just, something more flammable? Brake cleaner? Is, is, is there anything more flammable than gas? Extremely flammable. <laughs> You hear that when it does fire? It almost sounds like it's got a rod knock. Something goes clunk. Hmm. Flooded? Some more battery power. Can you guys hear that clunking going on? Kind of like a lower end noise. Maybe that's why they parked it. I wonder how many miles are on it. Do we ever look? Yeah, we definitely gotta charge some batteries. How hot is this battery cable getting? Not too hot on the starter side. I don't know if we're getting overly warm. Maybe just the new old Florida man batteries are on their way out. So looky there, 45,468. Look at that brake pedal. This thing's got 45,000 miles on it. So hopefully we can save that engine because it's a pretty low mile engine. But also look at this. See that little needle? Little white dot right above the Oh, right at about 72 mile an hour. This thing's got the speed minder option on it. So you could set that to different, I don't know, settings. And once you hit that speed, it should buzz at you and tell you, you know, hey, slow down. I think, I think we can adjust it. Is it this knob here? Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh, I've never had a car with the speed minder option. How neat is that? How neat is that? Let's just set her up to like, it's such a, such a short arm. You know, there's 75, 80, 85, 90. And then we're just, I, th I think it quits at 95 by the looks of it. You can barely see it down there below the speed. Oh, now we gotta get this thing running and hit 70 miles an hour so that we can hear this thing buzz. Dang it. Factory floor mats. This thing was good. Keyword was. Gosh dang it. Man, look at the seat. Got a couple of tears right there. I mean, it hasn't been slid in and out of that many times. Dual armrest, front and rear. We gotta get this thing going, Duff. Okay, let's give her. Let's give her another snort. She's been charging here for a second. I know it's not gonna go, but we'll try anyway. It's not even popping. Yowza. Maybe we gotta check our time. I guess I just kinda went off 
what was on here. So maybe somebody was messing with those plug wires before uh, and they could be off or I could have guessed wrong. So I'm going to set her to top dead center and then we will check from there. It's only a good idea. Yeah. Let's see if we can find our timing mark. Oh, I see the notch. The indicator. Oh, why does it turn over fast now? Okay, so it's got two marks. What the frick? Buick guys, you tell me. Why does it have two marks? Well, that's the other thing. We could have the timing off because maybe they mark the cylinders different than a small block Chevy. Oh, we better look that. Let's see what the interwebs has to say. Sure enough, we had an Tiffany. She's right. And we went to teambuick.com. Shout out to those guys and gals, whatever. Firing order is correct because it's on the valve cover. One, two, seven, eight, four, five, six, three. But these things are like a Ford. Well, I don't know. No, no, not like a Ford. No, not that bad. But it's passenger side, one, three, five, seven. Driver side, two, four, six, eight. And surprisingly, I think like four out of the, four out of the six plug wires are in the right spot. I mean, obviously we had number seven in the right spot, we think. So anyway, move some plug wires around. Now let's see what happens. Plus our battery's got some more time to charge. So fingers crossed, this thing's just gonna light right off. What do you think? Yeah, he says he's done. Okay, let's do this. Here goes nothing. Nothing. Oh yeah, we left the points hooked up that whole time. Sure. But that's gonna be real good for them. Here we go. Sounds way better. I mean, that's what that knocking we were hearing was. You know, the plug firing at the wrong time, with the piston being at the bottom of the cylinder or something. Oh, I think we hooked a fuel pump up to it. Give her some gas. I just don't like bottle feeding them. It never seems to work. fuel pump up to it. I just have a lot better luck doing that because then you're constantly feeding fuel to it and you're not over fueling it. And we're just letting the carburetor do its thing instead of bypassing it. I know a lot of guys get them to run off the bottle. Pudding does it all the time. It just never seems to work for me. <laughs> Plus it'll be super easy on this one because there's the fuel line. Hard part's gonna be finding where our fuel tank and fuel pump and everything's at. Come on. Just give us give us some faith right here. Yeah, it'll definitely go. Stay tuned. Look at that duff. She's pulling some rust out of the tailpipe. She might live. He ain't got much faith. We got our Atwood boat. Fuel tank thinger up there on the roof where it should be. And then we got our pump down here so that it's pushing fuel into the carburetor. You don't want those electric pumps pulling. It's our hepatitis C pump. I don't know what HEP stands for, but hepatitis C you later, I guess. Hepatitis C you later. So let's see if she'll live now. Let's see if my new boat tank and my new fuel line and my new fuel pump all work. Pudding has he struggles with these fuel pumps. I don't know why. They all work for me, usually. 
think hey, we haven't had issues yet. Knock on wood. Oh, and we left the points hooked up that whole time again. Awesome. So ground, power. Should get quiet once we get fuel and pressure to it. Oh yeah, we got uh, we got a stuck float. Where's a striking device? Our 11 16th striking device. Oh no. Fixed it. Fixed it. All right. Let's see what happens. <laughs> in gear and it's in jack stacks. Now she's in park. That could have been not good. Well, kids, I hate to leave you on that note, but this 45,000 mile 401 Buick nail head with 445 foot pounds of torque and 280 horsepower has a very, very, very bad rod knock. Dang it! Well, I guess I'll get my new battery cables back and plug wires. And fuel pump and fuel lines. Uh, like I said, I bought this thing because I want that transmission. I don't need it, but a kind of a one year, hard to find the old switch pitch 400. Something about variable veins in the torque converter or something. Guys really like that and they put them in turbo 400s back in the day. Uh, basically, it's for a three speed automatic that you could put behind uh, the earlier nail heads. Well, earlier, like the 60 to 65 401s it gets rid of that big ugly cast iron two speed that they got like dyna glide something and then the 45 fin brake drums i mean i hate to strip the car of those things but shoot i was hoping with all that torque we'd get to go do some burnouts and such this one was duff yeah like i said i could hear that when we were cranking it over i could, I could hear it sounded like a rod clunking i'm like ah maybe it's just the starter hanging up or compression or I don't know, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a rod knock. Let's, let's check one more time just to verify. Definitely on this side, but it's idling. She's shaking pretty good. Sorry, Duff, I, I don't think we're gonna go for a ride in this one. It does have oil pressure, the light is off. Power steering works. Well, just kidding, it's off the ground, it's gonna steer easy. Oh my goodness. That That is a lot of mouse house right there. Look at that, it's not even smoking. Too bad. Too bad. Can you believe it's just idling Duff? I suppose we could try to do a burnout. Really a long ship. Almost lost some eyebrow edge there. Anyway, I hate to leave you on this note. Really the only thing we could do is tear this thing apart further and show you 
a wiped out bearing, but if you want to see what one of those looks like, uh, go check out the Slant 6 video, my 1968 Dodge D100 when we swapped the engine in that thing here a couple months ago. And then we swapped engines in that 62 F100 four wheel drive and my station wagon. We had that out, we've had it out in the Bronco. We've had it out in the 61 unibody. Had Cadillac engine out. We're I'm not pulling the engine in this thing just to show you guys that it needs to be rebuilt. So I guess I guess that's where we're gonna we're gonna leave you. We'll probably put it up on this fancy hoist thing here though and pull the transmission out. And then knock the rivets off those brake drums, put the hubs back on so we can make it roll. And then somebody else can own this thing. So hit us up if you want a 1966 Buick Electra, deuce and a quarter, with 45,000 original miles, maybe. Road wheels, speed minder that may or may not work, power windows, power seats, tilt wheel, air conditioning, I think it's got cruise control, power brakes, power steering, all that good stuff. And if you hit us up quick enough, you might just get the transmission with it and the brake drums. That's all I want. And we'll probably just drag something into work on in the meanwhile, because I really hate to kill this thing. But at the same time, it's probably not a super valuable car. Interior, I think, would even clean up. It doesn't even stink that bad. I think the mice were just living in the tailpipe, not in the car. So, on that note, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos. Click the link down below. Check out some merch. You know, summer's coming up. Get yourself a Next Level tee. They're my favorites. Uh, which one's my favorite right now? I'd probably get Chins, Square Body, Brown, Chevy Pickup, Short Bed. That one's pretty good. I have that 92 Chevy. I've been driving that thing every day. It's all covered in Mayflies right now because they're out thick, because it's getting nice out. What time to take the long sleeve off. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. I think this Buick would have been fun if we'd have got it to run. The poet didn't even know it. Well, on to the next one. Thank you.